All right, recording. My name is Joe Sertich. I'm the curator of dinosaurs here at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. And I'm here to talk about cool dinosaurs from Antarctica, my experience in Antarctica, and this film all about the dinosaurs of Antarctica. Join a new generation of scientists to uncover a hidden dinosaur story. Welcome to the dinosaur continent of Gondwana. Dinosaurs of Antarctica. Could you tell us why you actually went to Antarctica in the first place? Yeah, so I went to Antarctica 11 years ago now, and that was to find evidence of dinosaurs that lived in the Cretaceous, the very end of the time of the dinosaurs, just as Gondwana, the supercontinent of the southern hemisphere, was breaking apart, and to test hypotheses about how dinosaurs moved and lived on Antarctica. Awesome. All right, well, we have a few questions here for you from different dinosaur fans, uh, Antarctica fans, and just things that we're just curious about. Cool, so. well, let's get started. I wanna answer some of these. All right. First question, where did you sleep in Antarctica? Well, as part of living in Antarctica, we were there for 17 days, so about two and a half weeks or so. Uh, we were living on the coast, so it wasn't all icy. We didn't have to worry about ice. It was kind of rocks and mud and sand. And we got there and we set up these really cool wind resistant tents, we buried them in. And then inside the tent, you've got a cot and they give you a really great sleeping bag and a really great sleeping setup. And then because it's so cold and gets so windy at night, they also give you a bottle to pee in. So in case you wake up in the middle of the night, you have to go to the bathroom. You've got a bottle right by your bed. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty awkward to have yeah, other horrible. people in the tent with you. <laughs> All right, next question. There we go. Yellow one. Question is, what is the most common misconception about Antarctica? And I would say it has to do with the ice. Everyone thinks of Antarctica, they think of ice, ice flows, icebergs, think about penguins sitting up on top of icebergs. Uh, there's actually a lot of Antarctica that isn't covered in ice. So right across the middle of Antarctica, right through the heart is a range of mountains called the Transantarctic Range. Those actually shoot up and poke through the big ice cap, great place for dinosaurs. And then when I was there, we were actually working on the coasts. So there's actually coastal rocks exposed along the Antarctic Peninsula and other parts of Antarctica that also have cool fossils. So could you guys hang out on the beach there? Yeah, it's a cool beach. Not really a place you'd want to go sun tanning though. <laughs> How's the sun? Uh, it's intense. So when the sun is out, you really feel it. So it's really easy to get a sunburn down in Antarctica. Wow, cool, interesting. All right, next question. This one is sticking up ready for me to grab. The question is, what did you eat or drink in Antarctica? And that's something that took a lot of preparation. So any teams that go to Antarctica, and you'll see it when you go to this video or to this movie, there's a ton of prep ahead of time. So almost two weeks of building out your packs and planning all of your meals. Most of them are meals ready to eat. So those freeze dried meals that you take with you when you go camping. But we have other things along with us too. And we can even bring a little bit of beer or whiskey along uh, to make the nights a little bit easier. Make it a little warmer. <laughs> <laughs> nice, cool. All right. Let's see, blue one, these are hard to unstick. What is your favorite thing about your job? Well, I obviously love dinosaurs, so that's an easy answer. I love to go out and dig and make discoveries, but I really love working at a museum. I really love building a collection, working with really amazing people that do all kinds of really cool, talented things that allow me to take all the discoveries I make out in the world and bring them to you. So bring them to the, the public and share the, some of these discoveries firsthand. That's what I really like about my job. Discover a prehistoric kingdom lost to time and ice. Welcome to the dinosaur continent of Gondwana. You don't have to be a curator like me. There's lots of ways that you can get around dinosaurs. You can be an educator, so someone who likes to teach people about dinosaurs, a preparator, someone who's really good about the details of cleaning and getting a fossil out of the rock, a collections manager, so getting all these fossils and helping to identify and organize them. So there's a ton of different things you can do if you're into dinosaurs. Let's go on to the next one. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna answer this one. This one's pretty personal. <laughs> Who wrote that? <laughs> Next question, how many fossils did you find? Well, like I said, we were there for about two weeks 
and we're able to collect probably a couple thousand fossils. But that wasn't just dinosaurs. The dinosaurs are really rare in the part of Antarctica where I was working. But the rocks are from the edge of the, the marine. So they're shallow marine fossils. That includes things like ammonites, those coiled squid-like relatives. The animals that ate ammonites, so plesiosaurs, the big marine reptiles. And some of the first modern birds in the fossil record come from Antarctica. And those were birds that were also living in a marine environment, very duck-like. And so we found some of the cool skulls and chunks of those birds as well. That's cool. Were animals a lot bigger in Antarctica? Were they small or just a variety of everything? It's a variety of sizes. So some of the fossils, the birds are pretty small. So we were finding little skulls that were about this big, um, but we were finding big chunks of bones of plesiosaurus, so the big flipper, long necked uh, fish eating animals that lived in the sea, uh, which would have been 30 or 40 feet long. So really cool diversity. Wow, that's so cool. Next question. How cold was it? Was it deadly cold? Well, we went down in what is the Antarctic summer. So all these expeditions that go to Antarctica to do paleontology leave in either late December or all the way through till the end of about February. And that's because all the sea ice has to break up and you need good warm weather. So it actually wasn't that cold. So most days were above freezing. Uh, nights got just down to around close to freezing. Uh, I would say the worst part of it is the wind. So there were winds that were up to 70, 80 miles per hour as gusts. Jeez. And I remember at one point coming over the a ridge and almost getting picked up off my feet and blown through the air. The wind was so strong. That's crazy. Are your boots heavier when you're in Antarctica? <laughs> it's all the same gear you have here. So it's a lot of the same gear that you'd wear around the mountains of Colorado in the winter. Crazy. Patagonia. Yeah, a lot of Patagonia. <laughs> Brain drop. <Yeah. laughs> Do you have a favorite dinosaur? Well, of course, I think all paleontologists have a favorite dinosaur. A lot of them change, um, but I've come back to the favorite dinosaur I had when I was a kid, and that's a dinosaur called Taurosaurus. And that's because here in the Denver area, we find amazing fossils of Taurosaurus, including the most complete one ever found, uh, which we dug up in 2017 in Thornton. So I always loved Taurosaurus as a kid, and then getting to dig up and describe a really complete one now makes it my favorite again. Is that, are you talking about Tiny? Tiny the Taurosaurus, yep, that's right. Nice. All right. We're gonna miss her. Could you guys tell what it was? When we dug it up? Tiny. Well, we didn't know if it was a boy or a girl when we dug it up, but we thought it was originally a Triceratops, and then after getting it back to the lab and cleaning it up, we realized it was something else. Ah. That was the relative Triceratops, Taurosaurus. Discover a prehistoric kingdom lost to time and ice. Welcome to the dinosaur continent of Gondwana. The next question, which is on a very bizarrely colored piece of paper here. Are birds dinosaurs, yes or no? And that is an easy one. We've uh, compiled over the last 60 years or so amazing evidence that shows that birds are the only group of dinosaurs that survived the major extinction. And when you're talking about Antarctica, you're talking about a place where some of the only marine dinosaurs are still alive today, and those are penguins. So dinosaurs that went back to the ocean are penguins. Oh, cool. Let's go on to the next one. Give an interesting fact about dinosaurs that most people don't know. Well, there are a lot of different topics in dinosaur paleontology that I think the public is familiar with. Is T-Rex a scavenger or a hunter? Were dinosaurs cold-blooded or were they warm-blooded? I think one of the really cool things that's come out over the last 20 years or so uh, is just how feathered dinosaurs are. So we think of dinosaurs and birds as being related now, but those feathers aren't just in the meat-eating dinosaurs. They are actually showing up in a lot of different groups of dinosaurs. And now we think feathers or feather-like structures were common across the different groups of dinosaurs. So imagine a triceratops with feathers on its back. Crazy, right? That is very crazy. It's like giant lizards with feathers. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't make it's sense. All right. Can we find fossils from Antarctica here at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science? Yes. So when I was there uh, 11 years ago, I actually hadn't started the job here yet. I was still three months away from starting here, but I sent ahead one of the huge ammonites, the big coiled uh, squid relatives. Uh, and we have a huge shell, it's about this big, of a giant ammonite down in our collections. That's the only fossil we have from Antarctica. Awesome. 
Is that something people can come see? They come to the museum, they ask. Well, it's one of the things we have down behind the scenes. So only about 5% of our fossils are on display. 95% uh, of them are hidden down in our collection space. But it's something that if you get lucky enough to go on a behind the scenes collections tour or something like that, I'll definitely show you. Awesome. We're starting to run low on questions. What kind of animals lived in Antarctica? Any of the animals that are alive today? Well, all the animals that lived in Antarctica come from different time periods. When we're talking about the dinosaurs and fossils of Antarctica, we're actually covering millions and millions of years. And that ranges from before the time of the dinosaurs, so about uh, 250 to 300 million years ago, a time called the, the Permian. Uh, we have the very first dinosaurs, so really small animals that later grew up to take over the world. Um, in the early Jurassic, there are dinosaurs like this one. This one's called Cryolophosaurus over my shoulder. So bigger meat-eating dinosaurs with crazy crests. And then by the end of the time of the dinosaurs, you get long-necked sauropods and armored dinosaurs like you might find in other parts of the Southern Hemisphere. Wow. We have a very, very diverse array of different types and species of dinosaurs that are already known from Antarctica. And there's a ton waiting to be found. So if you want to be a paleontologist and you want to go make some of these cool discoveries, there's plenty more for you still in Antarctica. That's something I was just wondering. If somebody gets into it now, can they still dig stuff? <laughs> there's still a ton out there. Discover a prehistoric kingdom lost to time and ice. Welcome to the dinosaur continent of Gondwana. All right, this is a sticky one. <laughs> what was the most interesting part of your trip? Well, for me, I, I really love discovery. I really love going to remote places. I work in places like Egypt and Madagascar uh, and really remote places here in the Rocky Mountain West but this was by far the most remote. And so this is a place where you can go and there aren't airplanes going overhead. Anywhere else you go in the world, you'll see an airplane from wherever you are. This is one of those places where you don't even see air traffic overhead. So it's completely silent, amazing dark skies. Really, if you're into remote discovery, Antarctica is the best place. Wow, I wonder if Spirit has <laughs> round trip. I think United goes there. <laughs> Let's go through this one up front. Man, I didn't realize we had so many questions. It's a lot of questions. Yeah. Question is, why did you decide to become a curator of dinosaurs? Well, like a lot of dinosaur paleontologists, I'm just a kid that never grew up. So I still love dinosaurs. Um, and I also really like to build collections. And so being a curator at a museum allows me to go out and make discoveries and bring all those fossils back. And that's more for the community. That's for preserving these fossils for all of you um, so that uh, as, a, as a science, we have all these amazing resources at our disposal. So it's not just for my own personal research, it's so that we can all learn about the Earth's past. We're almost there. We're getting there. It's getting hard to reach in there. A few to go. All right. How did you dig through ice to find the fossils? Well, luckily, most of Antarctica, which is covered in ice, includes parts of uh, either mountain ranges or coasts where there isn't ice. So I didn't have to dig through the ice to get to the bones. A lot of the bones were just laying right there on the surface, just like the bones that you would find here in the Rocky Mountain region. All you have to do is get out and walk and know what you're looking for. Discover a prehistoric kingdom lost to time and ice. Welcome to the dinosaur continent of Gondwana. Next question, who should study dinosaurs and why? Well, I would say that the why is easy to, to answer. Why do you study dinosaurs? It's to learn about our past and see if it can apply to our present and our future and our understanding of how the world works. And then who should study dinosaurs? Anyone who's interested. So if you're, if you're fascinated with the past, if you're fascinated with dinosaurs as living animals, you should be a paleontologist. It's a really cool profession. That's our last question. You ready for this? The drums. Why should we watch Dinosaurs of Antarctica at DMNS? Well, if you're interested in understanding the past, uh, especially what weird places like Antarctica or the Southern Hemisphere were like, this is the movie for you. It's in 3D, you can just see these dinosaurs, some really cool scenes, and you get to learn a ton about the origins of 
uh, Antarctica's dinosaurs and how it applies to the world around us today. It's a really cool movie, so check it out. Awesome. Well, thank you, Joe. Thanks, Great. everybody. Thank you. Discover a prehistoric kingdom lost to time and ice. Join a new generation of scientists to uncover a hidden dinosaur story. Welcome to the dinosaur continent of Gondwana. Dinosaurs of Antarctica.